Hey everyone, Anthony here. I just want to talk real quick uh, about why I won't invest in Ethereum killers. And that's because every day I look in the news and I still see uh, people, I still see like companies and businesses and uh, institutional investors uh, adopting Bitcoin and that being in the news. Oh, AMC is adopting Bitcoin. JP Morgan is uh, buying Bitcoin, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. Uh, same with Ethereum too. But the thing is, so I knew back when Ethereum was first uh, invented in 2015, like it was completely revolutionary. Like it, it built so much on top of uh, Bitcoin being able to, uh, it's a whole programming language on top of Bitcoin that allows you to make smart contracts and build DeFi and do all these crazy other things. And that's 2015 to 2011, or yeah, 2021, uh, 2015 to 2021. And there's still people that don't get it that Bitcoin it isn't as usable as Ethereum. Uh, so just think like, say like six years from now, uh, like Cardano, Polkadot, there's all these places that would be on onto Ethereum and, and all in on Ethereum and everything like that, that by the time that they realize Cardano or Polkadot or whatever is, uh, better if it is better or isn't i don't know i haven't really looked into them i the, just telling you what i see in the news and my perspective and everything like that uh, it's going to take so long because all these years there's all these institutions finally getting into crypto and they're getting into bitcoin and bitcoin is in my mind is like way in the past so just looking at it like Maybe if these things are Ethereum killers, it's going to take so, so long for uh, all all the institutions and everything that uh, brought up Bitcoin's price and brought up Ethereum's price to adopt uh, Cardano, uh, especially when and I'm not just talking about like exchanges and everything like that, because exchanges, once exchanges accept Cardano and Polkadot and any other cryptocurrency, that definitely helps uh, raise the price. But we're talking about actual Ethereum infrastructure. Once these companies start using the Ethereum blockchain and building on the Ethereum blockchain, it's going to be so hard and like a mountainous task to switch everything over to Polkadot or Cardano or, or whatever the Ethereum killer might be. It's not as simple as like, say, when when Facebook was the MySpace killer, all that took was people just creating a new Facebook account because it's the actual users that drove uh, the adoption of uh, Facebook. So it's, it's, but when there's all this infrastructure and backbone built on Ethereum, like I said, it's going to be a lot more difficult. It's 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 not a simple task to just move everything over to a new platform because you have to learn and understand this new platform and uh, all the intric in intricities. You know the word I'm trying to say. This battery is going to die. So I'm just editing this video now, but uh, and I feel like I have good lighting, even though I have just one light turned on. Maybe I should do that in all my videos. Uh, well, I have two of this background light. Anyway, uh, all these Ethereum killers, like what new do they bring to the table uh, as well? Like Bitcoin had like uh, Litecoin come after it and that was popular. And what did it bring new to the table? Well, it was just a little tiny new change where it's like, all right, we're going to use a different mining algorithm uh, this way that uh, uh, people can still mine with GPUs and CPUs and all that because... Uh, the SHA-256 mining algorithm was taken over by ASICs and all that stuff. And even then, when I was mining Litecoin, I knew I'm like, this isn't that different from Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin's still, like, in the lead here. Litecoin's never going to take over Bitcoin. And everyone knew that. Everyone's like, oh, the motto for Litecoin is the silver to Bitcoin's gold and all that. Uh, but that's when Ethereum came along, and it was this entirely new programming language built on top of cryptocurrency so that you can 
write smart contracts on top of it. There's all this Turing, Turing complete tuning, Turing, Turing complete programming language uh, on top of it. Uh, it was completely revolutionary. And uh, it's the same thing with like uh, MySpace and then Facebook came out and it was like completely revolutionary from MySpace. Uh, maybe it wasn't as revolutionary, but like YouTube was completely revolutionary at the time. Uh, Instagram, where it was just all about pictures, that was completely revolutionary at the time because uh, places like Facebook, you couldn't really post pictures or anything uh, when it first started years ago and you couldn't post like, I remember using AOL and I'm like, oh, I wish I had an away message that was like my voice with me like speaking or singing instead of seeing like uh typing in do da d in uh my away message i could just sing do da d for whatever song i had in my mind that i was thinking of uh but all that stuff uh and and TikTok was like revolutionary as well uh but i just don't see that with any ethereum killer killers that exist today like cardano or or stuff like that and granted uh I haven't looked into them as in depth as uh, as I could, but everything that I see in the news, they're just titled Ethereum killers. And uh, it's like, all right, we do the same exact thing as Ethereum, but better. Uh, and then I look at these things, the but better, and it's like, well, you're not really doing anything better. I know that's not like an argument or a point, uh, but just a generalization. Because uh, whatever they say they're doing better than Ethereum, uh, they're also losing out on some good things within Ethereum. So say it's like, all right, we're giving, we're doing everything Ethereum does, but better. We're going to have uh, cheaper transaction fees. Well, those transaction fees are cheaper because it comes at the cost of privacy or it comes at the cost of how many transactions per second are uh, they can do and all that stuff. So when there's like an actual revolutionary thing, I'll invest in an Ethereum killer. Uh, and also, I have so much money in Ethereum now where I'm like, I'm okay. I don't need to make more money. So I'm not chasing the next big thing like I like my life depends on it or anything like that. Like I'm safe in Ethereum. Say Ethereum only goes up like 400, 500% in a year like it did in 2021, I'm not like disappointed because I didn't make 2000% uh, like one of them did. Uh, so it, it's not that big of a deal to me. All right. But there is a whole aspect as well where now I'm in uh, six years I have into Ethereum researching it and, and speaking about it and building an Ethereum validator and, and all that stuff. I have so much time and research put into that, that now I'm in the same place where it's like, well, this is a huge mountain uh, I have to overcome to switch to something else. And I'm like, uh, it, it's not worth it to me to switch somewhere else. Like I'm safe and I'm okay in, in Ethereum and I don't see Ethereum going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, with Litecoin, when I was invested in Litecoin from 2013 to 2015, like I had, uh, seven GPUs mining, uh, 6750s or something like that mining. Uh, you could find pictures of it, like on my YouTube channel, I made like videos about all that stuff. But uh, like I knew for like an entire year of watching Litecoin that Litecoin wasn't going anywhere. Like I was involved, heavily involved in Litecoin space uh, for the entire time that I was mining it and, and all that. I knew Litecoin wasn't going anywhere. I don't get that impression from Ethereum that Ethereum's not going anywhere, that Ethereum doesn't have a future. Like I get the impression that Ethereum's not going anywhere in the sense that it's solidified itself in the cryptocurrency space, but I don't get the sense that it's not going anywhere in the future, that it doesn't have a future. Mm -hmm.